If you're thinking about using soilless mix for your indoor cannabis production, here in Debaco University, I wanna provide you with some specifics and some tips to help you with that process. All right, let's get into some soilless mix suggestions for indoor cannabis plant production. So first off, I want you to understand that there are, as you're sure you are well aware, many soilless mix options. This category has many options within this broad um, title here. Growers will find one brand and stick with this, and different growers have different favorites. However, remember that manufacturers can change unex unexpectedly, uh, modify the recipe, uh, or discontinue a soilless mix line at any time. So you want to be well aware and well diversified so you do not have to relearn everything just because the manufacturer decided to make a change. Most general purpose soilless mixes will work out just fine for cannabis plant productions. I don't think you need to have necessarily only one. And there's some common brands. There's uh, Promix BX, Botanic Care Mix Online, Fox Farm, for example, the Happy Frog uh, listed or shown right above me here. These are just some examples of some common ones uh, that you may be familiar with or may have seen. Now here's a soil mix recipe uh, for cannabis. So at the in the uh, description, I provide uh, with some links to some references. You're welcome to check those out. So I got some of the information here, as well as I cite a source at the very last slide. You're welcome to check out as well for more specifics. But the following here. Uh, is listed for about one cubic uh, foot volume for easy scaling up to match your volume as far as kind of what you should be kind of mixing in there. Again, directed more towards the cannabis plant production. And please take this as only a suggestion. There are many uh, different other options out there. This one is very simple. That's why I like it. It's 50% peat, 50% vermiculite, five grams of dolomitic limestone to counterbalance some of the acidity that the peat may be bringing in, and 10%, uh, 10 grams of gypsum there to help uh, supply some calcium uh, to the plant. Properties of this medium mix allows for greater balance and aeration and also water retention. A lot of growers will su supplement the vermiculite for perlite, but vermiculite can potentially supply some silicate for the plant as well. Now, the reason why I like that one, as I said, very easy. 50% peat, 50% vermiculite, 50 grams dolomitic limestone, 10 grams gypsum for that one cubic foot. You will notice there are others that go a little bit more in detail. Some develop these super soil recipes that list all these ingredients. In the actuality, as far as the plant's concerned, many of these details may not be needed or may not be really benefiting the plant. Starting with this very basic formula and building from there would be my suggestion. Now that vermiculite that I mentioned, you know, it's, what's, what's it kind of, what's it look like? Well, it's kind of got this um, kind of that goldish kind of brownish kind of look to it. Um, what's so great about it? Well, it uh, has a lot of water holding capacity in CEC, which stands for cation exchange capacity which has silicate in it, and it's likely to benefit ca cannabis, unlike other substrate products, particularly perlite, which I know is commonly used. However, vermiculite use, if you haven't heard of it, is actually becoming used less and less, mainly due to its increasing in its cost. And many growers and manufacturers are utilizing perlite as a substitute. So if given the option for a better um, kind of a material to add, uh, vermiculite would be better than perlite, but it might be a little harder to find. And when you do find it, you might find it to be a little uh, more costly. Now the peat moss uh, example here has properties that are conducive to supporting uh, plant growth. However, some are looking for alternatives and, and supplements with some uh, turning to shredded wood and other products. Coconut coir is a good additive as well, but has slightly different properties. So again, looking at a good uh, kind of uh, base property to use, this peat moss. Uh, this is a picture I've taken myself. These are the ones that I've used. Uh, quite a good product here, very easy to apply, very consistent, uh, and usually easy to get uh, overall. But again, there could be some environmental concerns by some people. So optimizing the pH. So in that uh, mix there, what's very important is that you have a good uh, optimized pH. Some P can have a natural uh, a pH of around 3.8, which is very acidic. However, when mixed with the verm vermiculite, it usually will end up around 4.5. But remember, our target pH is around 6.0. 6.0, 6.3, 6.5, typically somewhere in that range. To achieve this dolomitic limestone, which is uh, naturally high in magnesium, it needs to be added to raise the pH. That dolomitic lime would be advised over calcitic or um, hydrated lime. Adding gypsum uh, will add some calcium and sulfur in a slow release rate, and it's a good kind of general additive there, and that's why it was mentioned in the 
previous recipe. If you're looking for that reference, not only in the description, but here I've provided you another YouTube video link that you're welcome to, again, take a look at there. But this is intended to be that quick little summary, kind of of giving you that quick little rundown of if you're looking at going through and kind of using a soilless mix, hopefully this gives you a quick recipe to get started with that process.